Crow 2 City of Angels Mood Review. The cover here says that it's number one in US A. I personally thought it was more like number two, but okay. It also says it's a new, violent, total experience for the senses, which I guess sort of fits because it certainly was revolting. This facial makeup never actually appears in the film. What we get is a pretty bland, it's just a couple of lines. I'm not saying what we got in the first one was all that elaborate, but it looked really good. It worked. Anyway, the plot. Ash Corvin had a son. Danny enjoyed spending his free time painting blue suns and running out to examine gunfire. Danny was a moron and got himself and his father killed. Taking place in Los Angeles, Ash returns, powered by a crow, and wants to wreak revenge on the gang responsible. The leader of this gang is mildly interesting. But as far as minions go, all we get is the Yellow Power Ranger, Kenny the Oracle, and Thomas Jane. Why was this movie made? Oh, right, the first one made money. Sarah returns, sexualized this time, because what kind of sequel doesn't crap all over what was good in the original? The film is just plain bad. It's quite boring. I never really got into it much at all. Our lead has no charisma. The dialogue, it's always bad and it goes back and forth between like being just plain bad writing, being, you know, really cheesy poetry, being utterly nonsensical. Yeah. The acting is lousy for pretty much everyone concerned. The action is just not that interesting. There's not really any poetic justice to the things that he does onto these gang members. It's just, you know, violent. In place of the beautiful gothic visuals and breathtaking locations of the first, what we get is yellow fog, and occasionally blue fog, so mix it up a little bit. For being shot in Los Angeles, this is just utterly unimpressive visually. That's... I don't know how you do that. The effects are just laughable. There are a lot of things in the movie that don't really make sense, even though it goes to great lengths to have characters exposit anytime something happens, basically. Anything that, you know, instead of trying to convey it visually, they just have a character say, oh, this is what happened. The way it's shot, I mean, Tim Pope, who directed this, is known for music videos, and only that. You'd think that he could at least, you know, build a mood, you know, that would be the basic, you know, what it, if, if a music director can't do that, what can music video director, and he just barely succeeds in doing that, and beyond that, it's just ugly. We have a ton of shots that are way too close, so when what is being filmed moves, it almost immediately moves out of frame, and it then cuts awkwardly to a new shot where it also moves out of frame almost instantly. <sighs> the movie is just plain bad. It's also relatively short, not sure it was much more than 80 minutes. The VHS came packed with, I think, 10 minutes of trailers leading up to it. It adds nothing to the first. The first really didn't need a sequel to begin with, and this just 
solidifies that. It tries to be the first in some ways, and there are certainly some superstitious slash religious overtones. The film, but the film ruins that by having far too much exposure of the crow himself, so we get kind of used to him. He doesn't really hold our attention because we're constantly seeing him. Yeah, that's all I gotta say. So, hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.